Well, 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 it finally happened. I am officially old enough to see history repeat itself. And it happened a lot sooner than I thought it would. Now, I'm not necessarily a very old man yet, but by internet standards, the age of 19 is practically prehistoric. So I'm a little bit surprised and a little bit taken aback by today's story. I would like you to meet 14-year-old streamer Kizzy, who is in the news today for following the age-old pattern of both content creator and child, being a dick. Hang on, I need to put on my young guy hat before we carry on. It is surprisingly effective how easily you can blend into children's groups wearing one of these before they even realize they've been conned. He already took one of them. But what pray tell was our friend Kizzy being a dick about? Well, normally, and I'm sure if you're familiar with my style of commentary, I would go into a rant about Kizzy's history and how he ended up in the situation that he did. But seeing as that I literally have t-shirts older than that human being, his history can be summarized by him literally cupping his mother's breasts less than a few months ago. And to tell you the truth, the world could have done a lot better if that just stayed the case. Because there's walking tall talking and barely functioning fetus was going around in public harassing anybody that he came across. In the exact same day, in the exact same stream, just hours apart, Kizzy nearly got into a fist fight with an old gentleman and then was purposely sticking his hands into other people's foods as a way of irritating them. Here's the clips. What are you doing? Yeah, what up? 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 Watch out! Watch out! Put your hand in my food again, and I'm throwing all of your phones. Disgusting behavior, as I'm sure we can all agree. And I won't waste your time going into the details as to why it is. Every other commentary under the sun has done that, including some news channels. Not to mention, again, there's nothing to talk about with Kizzy, because I can't repeat this enough, he's a fetus. So instead, I'm going to talk about some of the criticisms launched against him and the new batch of these content creators. First and foremost, Gen Z, we're dying. We're f***ing dying. We blinked and we're nearing our mid-30s. And Kizzy is a sign of those times to come. Through partial no fault of Kizzy's own, his mind has been shaped, molded, and crafted by some of the more popular content creators and online personalities today. Even as recently back as two years ago, Kizzy would have been sucking his thumb while Andrew Tate was on his screen, absorbing all of the information that was being put into his brain. And unfortunately, as a result of that, Kizzy was influenced by a bunch of less than reputable sources into believing that shock value is how you provide entertainment. I know this is a fact because I was the same. All my life, I've been doing YouTube on and off. But I was extremely fortunate enough to grow up in a time, a better time, when YouTube was all about creation and not irritation. In the bygone days, creative outputs like YouTube and Vine were just that, creative outputs. Of course, there was still competition, but for the most part, people just made what they felt like making. Smosh, Shane Dawson, Ryan Higger, Jenna Marbles, Good Mythical Morning, Old School David Dobrik, The Paul Brothers, and a million other names that I'm forgetting just did it for the love of the game, G. But nowadays, it's very rare to find find someone making videos who actually enjoys making videos, especially if they skew to the younger variety. The entire focus of content creation and video making is shock value and interest peaking because the competition is so vast and overwhelming. Your goal as a 10 year old 25 years ago was to play with your sister's Barbies and try not to get an erection. Nowadays, your goals as a 10 year old is to try and be a 110 millionaire by the age of 21 with over 55 million subscribers on your channel. And the quickest way to do so is by being a public nuisance. I've heard it said, and I've seen fingers being pointed, at your Aiden Ross types and your Kai Sinets and your I Show Speeds. But I want to defend those three and the ilk like it. Now, we're not idiots. We all know that their streams are geared more towards kids, and more specifically boys between the ages of 8 and 14. Even if they want to deny it, they represent everything that that age demographic loves and that gender demographic. And also, it's a whole lot of shouting and a whole lot of excitement to the point where someone like me watching it who has grown out of that age gets a headache from seeing it. But I just want to say it's not their fault. You got to give credit where credit is due to them lot. They do that within a respectable private space and for at least the most part with nothing but consenting parties. Except for when that speed oak nearly burnt down an entire house and possibly set fire to other houses. But you know, we all make mistakes. I still mull that that happened. And that's where this all falls apart. What happens when you take the limiter away? And that's exactly what the platform kick has done. You see, with those three that I've just 
mention. They all have the resources in order to do what they want to do, even if it's a little bit ball to the wall, in a safe, secure manner. And even before they had the resources in order to do those things in a safe, secure manner, there wasn't a platform that any of them were on that allowed them to get away with practically whatever they wanted. This is the trifecta at work. You have a generation that recognizes because of TikTok that virality is more important than life. They're inspired by off-the-cuff creators who are exceedingly popular purely because of how off the wall they are. And then you're giving this bunch of young kids a platform like Kick, which practically is a lawless jungle, the ability to use and stream on that. You're asking for a free finger prompt straight to your asshole. As much as we hate it, and I really hate it, censorship sometimes is a good thing. Blech. To a degree. Kick, the way the platform is currently being run, is you can practically get away with anything as long as the headline isn't too outrageous. And that's why you have these little babies coming onto the platform, streaming, and doing whatever they can to get their name out there. Especially when the site's own policies say that a 13-year-old can stream on there, provided they have a parent or guardian. It's kind of funny that we have all of those warning labels on products like video games and movies, specifically so kids don't get the wrong ideas from them. Why is Kick being allowed to run the platform the way they are, and letting people practically get away with murder whenever they feel like it? To me, I think everybody is missing the point of this, where the problem actually is coming from, and I actually recognize it because I'm super smart. The issue isn't the content creators themselves, who are adults, making the content for allegedly other adults. Evil f***ing real. The problem is the websites that aren't moderating them in any way, or at the very least, in not nearly an effective enough way. If you don't believe me, a majority of Kick's top creators were permanently banned off other platforms. Now, I personally don't agree with permanently banning anybody for anything they say. It does give you a little bit of an indication what exactly kind of people are streaming on Kick, a website that prides itself on free speech no matter what, and a website that produces numerous controversies on an extremely consistent basis. The one before this one being the whole Johnny Somali issue, who, by the way, is back on the platform right now, and was literally just, just arrested in Israel for harassing a soldier. That all being said, why did I say history is repeating itself? Well, dude, you may not realize this, but edgy streamers and edgy YouTubers have always existed, and they've always had their own little place as long as there was someone to upload. The thing is, as time goes on and those edgy streamers gain more notoriety, there was guidelines put in place by those websites to get rid of them. Immediately comes to mind is Ice Poseidon, whose crimes I shall list off here. He was nuked and eliminated through the process of actually having rules and restrictions in place. Those rules being so effective that he eventually found his way over to the one place that would accept him for the f***ing creep that he is. The exact same place where our boy Kizzy was. Make no mistake, I am not in favor of censorship in any way, but if you're gonna have an outlaw land where anybody can do whatever they want, you need to be extremely strict on who could go into that outlaw town. I'm cool with kick being a no-holds-barred, do-whatever-you-want competition, as long as a, it doesn't affect anybody who's not involved and consenting to it, and B, nobody of the inappropriate age can view it. Legitimately, a good suggestion, and Kick will never do it because it will absolutely decimate their business. You have to show proof of ID and passports that link up to your face in order for you to access the website. We will never see that happen for the same reason that we'll never see it happen in porn. It's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge industry. Hey, you're 18, right? Yeah? Good enough. Fortunately for you, you don't have to be 18 to subscribe to Dino. That's all I have to say on the matter, guys. Guard your chippies out there. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.